Hey guys, what's up? Rascalorian521, back with part 4 of my Lego The Walking Dead custom painted minifigures. So excited to show you guys these figures. I've been working on them for the last couple months now. Um, I love the way they all turned out. This is, this uh, showcase, of course, is, is in anticipation of the Season 8 premiere tonight. Season 8, Episode 1, titled Mercy. So without further ado, let's jump right into this with Rick Grimes. Starting up, we have Rick Grimes in his Season 4 second half slash Season 5 first half uh, look. And I've, this is like my f third version of this variant of Rick that I've done. Um, the only reason I decided to redo it, because I was actually pretty happy with my second version, uh, was the fact that um, recently I've started integrating uh, using construction paper to make jackets and stuff. And I wanted to try that with Rick's, uh, like you know, iconic brown jacket. So um, I'm actually pretty happy with the results. As you can see, you know, I cut it out of paper and then I painted on, you know, like the uh, the fur lining and then like the zippers and some of the lines and creases in it. Um, and then the back, in the back right here, we have just some more another crease right there and then the uh the fur lining which it doesn't look great from the back but it works it works all right um the torso is actually i believe like a red or yellow torso that i of course just painted all gray or yeah it's red you can see on the side there um you can see i put a blood stain on there and then some sweat on the rim of the shirt or not the rim what would that be called the collar um I gave him an AK-47 that I, the same one that he had in the last showcase, or in part two, and then I touched it up with some, uh, just the, repainted the metallic and the, um, brown parts of it. Um, his face is definitely an improvement, um, I kind of dry brushed, um, some, uh, some, uh, uh, dark gray into his black beard, and then I painted some, uh, lines on his face and then like the bags around his eyes I think make him look really menacing and creepy he's got the blood going down his face in the corner of his it was like his uh, hairline there and then just some strands of hair falling down his hair is black with gray dry brushed in it I haven't really touched that up since uh, you guys last saw him and then as you can just see his belt buckle his shoes and then old part of his shirt of his uh, shirt hanging down right there so this is my favorite version of Rick Grimes that I've done so far of the two that I have and maybe I'll even update my other one soon too because that figure could probably use a version two so there is Rick next up we have my version two of Negan um, of course this one is based off of the way he looks in the season eight, or season seven midseason finale heart still beating um, but it kind of just captures his overall look in the majority of the second half of season seven um, as you can see right here, he's got his, uh, and this time he's painted with his leather jacket open. Um, you can see he's got like some zippers and uh, different pockets and stuff painted on. Um, I tried to make this torso as neat as possible because he's like one of my favorite characters, of course. So I wanted to do the figure justice. Um, you can see his uh, white t-shirt there with the, you can see some skin showing at the collar. Um, his belt buckle with his shirt kind of hanging over it. Um, he's got black boots. Of course, his, his uh, jacket continues on to his, uh, to his uh, belt area. I mean, you see I sanded his hair down to kind of create that receding hairline look and kind of like just make the widow's peak stand out even more. Um, he's got the white bandage painted on underneath the sleeve right here. Um, if we go to the back of him, I also gave him a new face. I think that face looks pretty good for shaved Negan. Um, I got it off of a Stormtrooper, I believe. Um, the back of you can just see uh, some of the lines in the jacket and then just kind of like his, uh, his uh, back muscles right here <laughs> showing through. Um... And then we, if you see uh, Lucille, I actually rewrapped it. Um, I only used two uh, wires this time rather than uh, three. Um, I think it looks more like uh, the actual bat. And then I, of course, did put the uh, the one wire going over the top of the bat like he sports in the show. So if you can, you can kind of see it from like another angle there. So I think overall Lucille looks pretty good. She is a vampire bat after all. <laughs> but So yeah, there is Negan. And then also, I, I almost forgot to mention, um, I did, because Negan still kind of does the uh, red scarf look every once in a while, and just because that look is so iconic for him, I did keep the uh, bearded Negan and uh, the torso from my last Negan figure as well. So I can just kind of swap out some of the parts and then make a season six finale version of Negan as well. So that way I've got a choice. I've got two different versions of Negan I can choose from. Next up, we got Daryl Dixon, of course, and this uh, this actually isn't painted in like his season eight look, where he's or season seven, season eight look, you know, where he's just wearing the gray shirt and he doesn't have the vest, because of course Daryl took his vest. Um, I considered doing that, but at the same time, I think the vest is such an iconic part of Daryl's character that I figured I would just make kind of an earlier, like this is like a season six variant of Daryl, really. Um, but anyway, I, you know, I still like how it turned out overall. I still think it's a great figure. Um, just know that it's not entirely accurate to season seven or season eight. Um, but the vest, of course, is made out of construction paper. As you can see, I, you know, kind of cut it appropriately, you know, draw it, or draw it. I uh, painted on some of the uh, lines and the buttons and whatnot. 
In the back, we've got the angel wings painted on with the little collar at the top that's kind of being obscured by his hair. Um, his torso is like a dark gray button-up shirt. You can kind of see it right there. Some pockets painted on. Um, his crossbow I haven't changed at all since you guys last saw it, just because I really like the way the camo look looks or like turned out on that, and I didn't really feel like it needed to be updated. Um, his pants, if I move up his uh, crossbow, as you can see, um, he looks like he's like about to shoot you in the in the eye. <laughs> um, but his pants, of course, I painted on a little tear. I painted on the uh, the little uh, bottoms of his shirt right here. Um, you can see like the little hole that I was talking about, the little hole right there. Um, and then the shoelaces on the on his um, legs as well. So you can see you've got the dark green ones right here, and then these little tan shoelaces at the bottom. Um, I based those off of the seven inch uh, color tops uh, Daryl figure. I was kind of looking at that when I was deciding which what color and then how to paint the uh, shoelaces. Um, as you can see on the top of his arms, he's got like the little the tears in his sleeves from when he rips his shirt in half. Um, or when he, you know, he rips the sleeves off his shirt to make a tourniquet out of it in Season 2. And then his uh, face, I've got his goatee and eyebrows and everything painted on. Same hair as usual. Um, I thought about um, erasing the eyebrows and repainting them. I just kind of ran out of time. I forgot to do it. So I'll have to redo that someday. And you guys already saw the angel wings on the back. And uh, there is Daryl Dixon. Next up we got Carl Grimes, and this Carl figure is based off of his look in the Season uh, season 7 mid-season premiere, uh, Rockin' the Road, I believe it's called. Um, he's painted in a, a uh, dark blue uh, button-up shirt, as you can see with a pocket and some white buttons painted on, and then a light gray uh, t-shirt underneath. Um, he's got brown shoes. Um, I also realized uh, him and Morgan are the only two figures who I didn't repaint their shoes with my newer version of, or with my newer brown paint. Um, Morgan, I didn't do it because the the brown paint that I use for um, like black skin tone, excuse me, um, is the same color that I use for um, shoes now. So if I were to do that, then it would look almost like he's barefoot, and I was kind of worried about that. Um, uh, but with uh, Carl, I guess I just forgot about it. You know, there's no reason why I didn't. I just forgot, I guess. Um, so, oh well, it doesn't look too bad. Although the paint, you can see, is starting to chip on the shoes. I probably should have done that before this showcase, but oh well. Um, you can see he's got a regular handgun. Um, his hat, I haven't up really updated. I might have touched up the gold. I'm not sure. The gold tassels, you can see the top of them right there. Um, and then the one uh, big update with this figure is I sculpted his hair. I usually just painted it on the side of the head, but I actually sculpted it this time. And I love the way it turned out. I think it looks fantastic. Um, maybe not long enough. It probably could have gone down a little bit longer, but I wanted him to still be able to, you know, rotate his head. So I decided just to just go down to that length. And you can see I've also got the eye patch painted on underneath. I have a new head for him. can't remember where I got it. I think it was off some, like, Rebel figure from Star Wars. Um, and then overall, just some creases on the back of his shirt. And there is Coral Grimes. Next up, we have Carol. And this is, of course, Carol painted in her kingdom armor um, that she's shown prominently wearing throughout the season 7, or throughout season 8, or at least the clips we've seen so far. Um, and I gotta say, I tried multiple versions of doing the kingdom armor. I tried, you know, painting it on, you know, to look accurate to the show. It didn't look very good. You know, I tried another version. It didn't look very good. In the end, I decided just to go with this cheap little vest thing right here excuse me, that I got from uh, Brick Arms, and it, it works fine, you know, it's not perfect, but I think it does the job at least, you know, because I, I would imagine this is only going to be a one-season outfit for her, I figure once the war is over, probably by the end of the season, she won't be wearing this anymore, which I'm kind of glad about, because even though it's a character in battle armor, you think it'd be really cool, um, this was not a very fun figure to make, just because I, I was never really satisfied with the way she was turning out, um, but I finally settled on this, I think she looks decent enough how she is, of course, I finally found a face and hair that works really well for her, I believe, I painted, you know, some some extra creases onto the face and then painted the eyebrows gray. And I think that finally, after like three different versions, captures the look of Carol's face and hair. Um, she's got this uh, big shotgun to kind of, you know, like from the scene from the trailer where she goes, cover your ears, and then she shoots the shotgun in front of uh, Jerry and that little kid. Um, <laughs> you can see, like I said, she's got the armor painted on. She's got her sleeves kind of rolled up and some uh, some arm pads and then the lines connecting those elbow or those... um those uh, knee pads that were already on uh, the printed, those are those legs were already printed like that and then I just kind of painted the straps kind of connecting them, you can see the straps going all the way around she's got a black belt, or a brown belt on with her a black knife holster on it um, then a, a silver buckle and then you can just kind of see her uh, skin showing through 
And um, like I said, overall, not a super exciting figure, but I still think it does its job. I still think it's a pretty cool decked out and armor figure. I considered doing a Morgan figure like this, but opted not to and just do it for Carol. Um, and overall, I think she looks pretty good. Not the best, but she looks pretty good. Next up, we got Dwight, and this is actually, this figure is based off of his look in the uh, Season 8 uh, poster, or in different, you know, clips we've seen of him in Season 8, and then most prominently the poster. Um, he's got, like, a red button-up shirt out, you can see with some uh, white buttons, you can kind of see a t-shirt and his skin showing underneath there. Um, and he's actually wearing Daryl's vest with another brown jacket, or with another black jacket underneath, that's why he's got the, uh, the, uh, black sleeves. So I kind of just tried my best to replicate Daryl's jacket. I think I did a pretty good job matching it if we pull up Daryl here. See, I think I did a pretty good job matching the front, and then if we go to the uh, the angel wings in the back, um, Daryl's might look, look might look a little better, um, but I still think uh, this Dwight looks pretty good. I'll just put Daryl back there. Um, but other than that, other than his outfit, as you can see his face, I actually almost completely repainted his face. Uh, go back and look at uh, parts two and three version of Dwight. He kind of had more of like a smug grin on his face with his teeth showing. Um, it was some parts of the Caribbean face, which I thought looked good, but I thought I could do better. So I pretty much erased everything except for the eyes and the eyebrows. And man, oh man, am I glad I did, because I think this face looks incredibly accurate to uh, the actor, or at least to the character. Um... You'll see he's got just some lines painted on. Um, I paint on kind of his patchy beard and then the little, uh, little mustache that he's got. Um, you see I kind of repainted the scar a little bit. Or I, did, kind of, I didn't really repaint, I just touched it up. I added some more purple to the uh, like the bag around the eye, kind of made that little purple more prominent. And then I touched up the... Uh, it, this used to just be all pink, the scar. But then I realized in Season 7, his scar wasn't like bright pink like it was back in Season 6. It was kind of faded faded a little bit. So I dry brushed some like, light tan over it to kind of give it more of like a look that'll like blend in with the skin tone. Just to kind of like, you know, not make it as prominent. Um, and I think it looks pretty... Uh, the color-wise, it looks pretty accurate. So, uh, yeah, there's Dwight. One of my favorite characters. I, I might be in the minority here, but I think Dwight is one of the most complex and interesting characters that's currently in The Walking Dead, so I cannot wait to see what route they go with him in this upcoming season. Next up, we have Maggie Green, or as she said in Season 7, Maggie Green now. Um, seriously becoming one of my favorite characters in the entire show, I swear to God. She is, as far as characters are still alive, she has to be in the top five for sure. I love the direction they took her character in Season 7. Um, she's probably my favorite female character next to Michonne. Um, that'd be, I really like Carol too, though. It's really hard to pick. Um, but yeah, she's actually painted in the uh, really cool outfit. that I love that they gave her this, the jacket that she was painted in, in a, in, or the jacket that she was wearing in the Season seven finale and it looks like also in the season eight premiere um it's kind of, it was actually supposed to be more i think dark brown but i decided to make it gray just because i have i have more gray torsos open than uh dark brown um so i think i think it still looks pretty good though the paint job i'm pretty proud of you can see she's just got like some you know like the fur lining right there and then some of the red uh, it was kind of like a flannel look underneath um you see her skin showing through there, and then just some pockets and buttons and whatnot. She's got her belt with some, you know, with the X's painted on, you know, the little X uh, things that she's got in her belt, and then some uh, dots, and then uh, her little belt buckle right there. And then her jeans, those blue lines are just kind of supposed to represent, like, you know, like tears or whatnot in her jeans, just some more detail. She's got black boots on. Uh, same face and hair as you guys have seen her in the last two showcases. Or, no, she wasn't even, I didn't have a Maggie in part three, so in part two. Um, however, I did kind of shorten her hair a little bit. I did sand it down. Um, I still think that hair works really well for Maggie. Um, then the back of the figure, just some creases in the uh, torso, and then the back of her belt and of her boots. Of course, she has a handgun, kind of a standard handgun that a lot of these figures have. And yeah, there is Maggie Ree, one of the show's best characters, without a doubt. Next up, we've got the first of two men to fall victim to Negan and Lucille in The Day Will Come When You Won't Be. We've got a Sergeant Abraham Ford. Can't leave out the sergeant, of course. Um, so basically with Abraham, I re I like remade this figure um, to look like he does in, of course, his death scene in uh, Season 7, Episode 1, The Day Will Come and You Won't Be. Um, and I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. I like the jacket. Um, I think the jacket turned out pretty good. The paint on it, you can see he's got some of the lapels and whatnot painted on. Um, some pockets and, you know... Uh, pockets and creases and whatnot painted on and then his uh, gray hood that kind of continues on to the sides and then on to the back I couldn't think of detailing to do on the back so it's just kind of plain with the exception of the hood you can see the red torso kind of slip kind of sneak through a little bit there um, he's got uh, Indiana Jones legs I've always gone with those legs for Abraham because I feel like they match him really well especially with the belt and everything and the gun holster 
and then just some brown shoes painted on. Um, his torso is, like I said, a red torso with, oops, did I move that a little bit? A red torso with um, a, a, a tan shirt with some creases painted underneath. And then I feel like the biggest or the best update of this figure is his face. I think the face looks a ton better. Um, I used a better shade of orange. Um, I made the handlebar mustache a, a lot better and then I added some more wrinkles and then I even added that little mold to his face right there. And I feel like overall it just represents the character of Abraham a lot more. And then I gave him a new hairpiece as well. I kind of It's like a standard male hairpiece. I believe it was used on Mutt in Indiana Jones. Sanded down the sides, sanded off the front, and kind of like gave it more of like a prominent, like you know, point outwards. Um, I think overall it represents Abraham's hairpiece pretty well, uh, better than the last one I used at least. I don't like that it's like rounded at the top right here, but what can you do? Um, overall, I think this is a great figure, or I'm pretty proud of it at least. Um, oh, and then I also oh, forgot to say I kind of dry brushed this gun in um, in um, metallic. Um, just kind of see how it would look. I probably should could have done that with other guns too, but I just forgot. Um, I was just kind of testing it with Abraham's gun. I'll do that in the future because I think it looks pretty cool. It makes it look more worn. Um, and he does have uh, gray gloves on as well. Um, just one final look at the figure. And yeah, there's Sergeant Abraham Ford. Suck his. Since I don't have a Merle figure in this video, uh, Glenn is the only character now, or the only figure now to carry on the tradition of having a new version in all four uh, parts. Um, of these um, showcases that I've done, um, I just find that kind of funny. Um, I haven't, I've had four new versions or four different versions of Glenn now. Um, this one is basically just kind of a recreation of my last figure. You know, I'm still really sad about his death. I still miss him in like every episode. Um, but at least he had, you know, one hell of a death. Because I swear to God, that scene was filmed so beautifully and so perfectly and such a fantastic homage to the comics that as dark and depressing as it is i just love that scene so much just because of how brutal and how comic accurate it was um but the figure itself like i said for the most part just a remake of the last version he's got uh, some uh, dry brushed pants and uh some uh, bl or, uh brown shoes painted on uh just different creases in his um in his uh, like sweater or what not sweater whatever what would you call it, like a pullover shirt um, you can see a button, some buttons right here, and then a pocket, a white t-shirt, and then the skin showing through. I didn't update his face and hair at all. I felt those looked uh, pretty accurate to Glenn. I debated it, but I think they look pretty good. Um, of course, he's got a gun painted in silver. And the back of it, you can just see some more of the creases, and then like the, the collar of the back of his shirt. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, just pretty much an overall, just a better, you know, more updated version of the same figure that I had in Part 3. And now that we've seen the uh, infamous death scene, I have another figure to show you. So here you go. Here's dead Glenn. Uh, <laughs> feel sick yet? Um, this is a post-Lucille Glenn, as I like to refer to him as. Um, and this is actually the oldest figure in this showcase. I made this, or I sculpted this, I should say, uh, pretty soon after I saw the premiere. You know, maybe like a couple weeks after at least. So this figure has been done for quite a while now, almost a year. Um, or at least the head, I should say. Um, but yeah, this is basically, really all I did was here, you guys can kind of see, I'll swivel a little bit. What I did is I basically sanded down a um, yellow head, or just a head that wasn't really useful to me, that I knew I wasn't going to need anytime soon, down to basically just like the little stump of it, just, you know, so I can make it a removable head. And I basically just sculpted this all around it, you know, I put some, uh, I kind of sculpted the main base of it and put some clumps in there that I then painted uh, pink with some red dry brushing to kind of represent some, uh, uh, <laughs> some brain matter. And then this big section right here with this little dot, and then I of course painted that to be his uh, eye that we see in the pile of mush. <laughs> like I said, really morbid, um, but sculpting this is just so much <laughs> fun, as dark as that sounds. And I think it's one of the, one of the more unique figures I've ever done for sure. And of course, the body, you know, what you're seeing here is just regular Glenn, just with the head removed. And then you can see a little patch of skin I painted right there to kind of show that it like used to be a head. Um, and then just to kind of show you guys how it was made, like I said, I just sculpted or I just uh, sanded down a large portion of a yellow head and then just painted the green stuff all red for the most part. And then with some uh, some brain matter and whatnot. And then the eye painted afterwards so there is glenn's vampire bat uh variant <laughs> whatever you want to call it there is dead glenn next up we have the governor and i gotta say i love the governor in the show one of the best villains they've ever had um rivals negan for sure i just love david morrissey's performance you know going back and rewatching some of the older episodes recently i just always forget just how phenomenal of an actor he was in the show um but onto the figure itself um of course, similar to Rick, the main reason I'm updating this guy um, is because I wanted to, um, you know, give him a uh, paper coat. 
or a paper jacket, I should say. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the way the jacket turned out. It could be, the paint job could be a little bit better, but overall I'm glad um, that I did it because the last jacket was black that I dry brushed uh, with some brown to kind of make it look like the dark gray that it was in the show. Um, whereas, you know, because I just, I didn't have enough gray torsos to spare, so I couldn't make it color accurate. But now with this one, I can make it color accurate, so I'm pretty glad that I went through with it. Um, but onto the figure, I wasted a lot of time talking about him. Um, he's got, a uh, brown, uh, shoes painted on to black legs. He's got a brown belt with a belt buckle painted on. He's got a, uh, dark blue, uh, button-up shirt underneath. You can see the yellow torso. Um, then of course the coat. You can see I painted, you know, just some cuffs and whatnot on his hands. And then the, um, just some lines of the jacket on his, uh, or on his hands, I meant to say on his arms. Then just some more lines on the, um, on the sleeves. And then the coat itself, or the jacket itself, you just see the pockets painted on, and then some of the buttons and whatnot, the lapels. The back of it is, uh, ugh, yeah, <laughs> the paint job on the back looks terrible. I'm really not fond of how that turned out. Um, but overall, I think it looks alright. You can see the back of the shoes, his gun, I haven't really changed at all. And then his face and hair is the exact same as last time too, because I love the way they turned out with like the lines and then the, the blood splatter and everything. I think the face and the hair captures the governor really well. So I was mainly just trying to update the torso for this one, and I think he looks pretty good. You know, the paint job on the jacket isn't the best, but overall I think, you know, it, it does its job well. And maybe I'll redo it in the future, but for now, this works. Next up, we have King Ezekiel. Uh, no Shiva to go along with him. If you want to see Shiva, go back and watch Part 3. It's the last figure I show. I just explained it for like five minutes. Um, I may have to go back and update her soon, though, because the, I didn't use a great shade of um, orange for that one. It's a little too bright. Um, so maybe you'll see that in Part 4. Who knows? Sorry if you hear noise in the background, by the way. There's a motorcycle being really loud outside my house. Um, but yeah, King Ezekiel is a figure that definitely needed updating. Um, his figure that I did of him in part 3 um, I was just basing off of promo images of the season that we'd gotten so far and he wasn't the best so I went back and tried to correct all the mistakes I made with that figure in this one um, of course he's wearing a um, or I made the uh, paper his jacket or his uh, his cape or whatever you want to call it um, his trench coat um, is made out of um, uh, paper once again which I painted on the uh, fur lining on the side you can see he kind of goes all the way around um, I shortened up his staff a little bit. I kind of forgot to sand that down, but shortened up his staff. Um, I didn't give him a sword, um, because I just feel, you know, it would have been too hard to, uh, get one that looks good, so I just gave him the staff. Um, his shirt is actually, because my yellow paint sucks so much, his shirt is actually yellow, or his torso is yellow, and then I just basically painted it all, uh, or light blue, and then with all the details, the buttons and the lapels and everything, and then I just made little crosses, or little stars with a toothpick to kind of represent the yellow stars, because I did not want to paint them on, because my yellow paint is extremely watery. I'm gonna have to, I've gone through, like, three different brands so far, and every one, the yellow, the yellow paint is just awful. It's really watery, and I'll just, I just have to keep, keep but I have to keep switching brands for some reason. Um, his hair I haven't touched up at all. It's the same uh, brown or the same gray that you saw last time. And then his face, I repainted the beard and the goatee and everything. I made it look better. And then I kind of erased some of the random lines that the original figure had on his forehead. So overall, I'm really happy with this guy. Oh, and then he also does have black shoes painted on. So there's just that. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this guy. And he's one of the show's best new characters for sure. Alexandria will not fall, not on this day. Love it, awesome line. Yes, after people hounding me to make him, I have finally made Aaron. And I'm really glad that I did, because one thing I learned in Season 7 is that Aaron is one of my, like, of the characters still alive, one of my favorite characters. I just love his loyalty. I love kind of just his role in the show, you know, the way that he was, like, you know, the most accepting of, you know, Rick and his group, you know, as soon as he met them, and he was always the one kind of advocating, you know, fighting for them, you know, saying that they're good people. And overall, as far as, like, Alex the characters that were, like, you know, new to us, like the Alexandrian characters, when they first introduce them. Aaron was always my favorite for sure. And I love the direction they've taken his character and made him more of a hard, uh, you know, hardened leader kind of guy. Him going out and runs with Rick and everything. I just love it. And Ross Marquand is one of, is a hilarious actor. If you've ever seen Ross Marquand's impressions, um, he's such a talented guy. Um, but enough gushing about the character. Uh, the, the figure of course is just painted in an outfit that we saw him wearing in the season, uh, season 8 trailer. Um, it's just kind of like a, uh, a button up, um, or just kind of like a pullover shirt with a couple buttons at the top here, a gray shirt. You can see the lines are very similar to the way I did a, or a Glenn's torso with, you know, different lines and creases on it and whatnot. He's got a belt painted on with a, a belt buckle. Um, you, see, you can see he's got brown shoes and just some more creases in the back of the torso. He's got Harry Potter hair painted brown. 
Um, I wanted to use the thin hair uh, painted brown, but I didn't really have any to spare, and I didn't really bother to go on eBay to find or on Bricklink or whatever to find to buy one. Um, so maybe I'll update that in the, in the future. But for now, this looks pretty good. I think this matches his hair pretty well. You can see he's got like these lines to show like that he folded up his sleeves. I just, just something new I was trying. I think it looks pretty good. Um, his face is actually a, a Legolas face or some sort of elf face from Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit with um, kind of like a little bit of a patchy beard painted on. And I don't think I painted his eyebrows. I believe those are already brown. And there's also a really quick shot in the trailer of um, him firing off this automatic weapon. Um, so I just kind of gave him this weapon that matched the best. It was basically the weapon that matched what he was holding in that scene the best. And then I painted a little red scope on it right there. And yeah, there is... Um, Aaron, like I said, one of my favorite characters currently alive in the show. Another figure that people have been begging me to make for the last couple of showcases is Rosita, so I finally decided to make her. Um, I still haven't made Tara yet. Um, Tara's just, she's never been one of my favorite characters. I feel like she's overstayed her welcome. Um, and unless they do something with her in Season 8, I don't know if I ever will make a figure of her. Nothing against the actress, I'm just not a big fan of the character. Um, Rosita, it was kind of tough to make a figure of her because I really just don't like the direction they took her character in Season 7. It was for sure one of the weak points of the season for me. Um, I didn't like that she was just a complete B to everybody just because she was mad that Abraham was dead. Um, but still, either way, I think this figure turned out really well, and I hope they take her in a better direction in Season 8. I'm sure they probably will. Um, but, excuse me, for this figure, she's painted in an outfit that we see her in the Season 8 trailer, just a brief snippet we can see her driving in a car with Michonne and I based the outfit she's wearing in that on um for this figure um, of course she's got like a, a pink uh or a pink or purple uh just like tank top or whatever um shirt um and then she's wearing a uh, dark tan jacket you can see the skin showing through with the gloves right there um black pants brown boots um a brown belt with a uh, golden belt buckle it's either golden or silver I can't tell with the way the light's tr uh, shining on I believe it's gold um, her hair I actually sculpted on. The hat is an official piece, and then I sculpted the hair onto it. So I think that sculpt turned out really good. I'm really happy with how that looks. Um, then I painted the uh, little scar that she has on her face from when um, um, Arat cut her in Heart Still Beating, Season 7, Episode 8. And then her gun is actually based on a gun that she holds in, um, or a gun that she wields in um, um, Twice as Far, I think, the Season 6 episode where... Um, the one the doctor gets shot in the eye. I can't remember Denise where Denise gets shot in the eye, um, with just some uh, brown paint like painted details over here, and then the red scope. So like I said, the gun is based off of the gun she has in that scene. And um, yeah, overall, like I'm not a huge fan of the direction they took Rosita's character, but I feel like they're gonna. I'm really hoping they'll do something epic with her in season eight, um, because she does have potential to be a really cool, strong female character. So um, yeah, there's Rosita. Next up, we got Jesus, and I gotta say, out of all these figures, I think I'm pretty confident in saying that looking over all these guys, Jesus is the biggest improvement. Like, this figure shows more improvement than any of the other figures, because my Jesus in, in Part 2 is horrendous. That is a bad figure. The hair looks awful. The jacket is, like, really, like, it was my first time making a paper jacket, and it just looks bad. Um, and overall, it is just not a great figure. Um, but I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. This is probably one of my favorite figures of the showcase. Um, of course, he has um, red pants. I'm not sure if they... they I think they, they're supposed to be brown, actually. Um, but I'm kind of short on brown pants right now. And um, I think the... Uh, I really like the way the pockets look right there. Sorry, saying brown pants. I was sorry if I'm struggling talking there. Saying brown pants, I was just thinking of that line from Deadpool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he's got a, a black boots painted on. You can see some little straps right here. Um, his jacket is the accurate color this time, not brown like it was last time. It's a, a dark gray. You can see his uh, skin showing through the glove tops right there. Um, we turn to the back of him. No detail paint on the back. I probably could have done something, but I just I forgot. Um, his whoops. His torso, I believe, is one of my favorite torsos I've done for the showcase. He's got the black straps painted on. You can see the scarf at the top, a little pocket right there. That's really small. <laughs> I should have done, made that bigger. Um, and then his face is the uh, same face as the last time, Indiana Jones face with the, the mustache painted on and the beard and everything. And then I sculpted his hair this time. Uh, or the same, the same thing I did last time, but this time it looks a lot better. It's probably not as long as it should be. It should go down to like, you know, maybe his shoulders or something like right here. But once again, similar to Carl, I wanted to be able to turn his head. Uh, I haven't turned it in a while, so it's a little stiff, but I want to be able to turn his head. So, of course, I sculpted that, painted the hair brown, and then gave him um, a beanie. Same beanie, I believe, the last figure had. So, yeah, there's Jesus, one of my favorite figures of the showcase, and one of my favorite characters in the show as well. 
Next up, we have Jadis. Um, I know a lot of people hate this character. Um, I don't hate her. You know, I, I think I think the scavengers are a cool, unique group. Um, <clears throat> and you know, I don't think they're as bad as people make them out to be. You know, people say it's like they're like adding these characters is like jumping the shark for the show, and that them not being able to speak English is like the worst thing ever. You know, it's it's dumb, but it's not terrible. I think I think at least Jadis is a pretty compelling villain. Um, I just hope she doesn't overstay her welcome. You know, because they haven't used her a ton in the show, and I hope it stays that way. I don't want them to her to get a huge focus in season eight, but I do want her to be like a mini threat for Rick. You know, um, I do hope you know they give her a decent role, but not a super important role. You know. Um, but anyway, starting off with Jadis, you know, he, she's basically, she was a kind of a complicated figure to do because I didn't know how I wanted to do her, her, uh, sweatshirt thing that she wears because it kind of drapes down to her legs, so I couldn't just paint it on, so I had to make it out of paper, so I decided to basically make a backwards coat, you can see it kind of, you know, it, you know, connects to her arms, and then I just painted, like, the hood and then some creases on the back, you can see her, the back of her hair, which is sculpted there with the two tones, um, and she's got just this regular pistol. Um, this head was the old head I used for Carol. I believe it fits her a lot better. Or it fits uh, Jadis a lot better, I should say. Um, like I said, the hair is sculpted on. Her Jim Carrey hair. <laughs> um, and then she's got the mole and then some creases uh, uh, or painted onto her face. And then a lot of the painting was mainly just done on this jacket right here. Which I tried my best to replicate how she looks in the show. She's got the um, gr the uh, gray just kind of stripes down here. The blue stripe. Um, these different little things that kind of, you know... Um, kind of the, like the zipper or whatever you'd call this right here. You see her skin kind of showing through and then the hood, like the front of the hood right there. And then overall, I think this is a pretty pretty good figure. You know, it's not not the best. Um, I don't really like how this is kind of open. Um, but overall, like I said, I'm kind of excited to see what they take, what direction they take this character in the show because she is weird and she's different, but that's kind of what I like about her. She's something very different we've seen in the world of The Walking Dead and I like that about her. Next up, we've got Michonne. Um, once again, one of my favorite characters in the show. I know I say that a lot, uh, but she's always been one of my favorites. Ever since, like, season four, I've always said she's one of my favorite characters. Um, as you can see with her, um, I mainly just... Most of this is just kind of the same, just as the last version that I had in part two, just repainted to look better. Um, as you can see on her, she's got uh, black boots painted onto this, uh, these uh, werewolf legs. I feel like look good, you know, because she's got the terrorism and everything. Her belt I painted brown, or I mean uh, black, excuse me, with um, the uh, gold belt buckle and then some little dots to kind of represent. I forgot to paint uh, the dots on the back of the belt, um, but still looks pretty good from the front. Um, her face is actually a yellow head that I painted brown, like I do with a lot of, you know, black faces, or with a lot of, uh, you know, if I'm making a black character, what I'd basically just do that with a yellow face and just kind of paint brown around it. Because for some reason, Lego doesn't make a lot of black people, and that kind of annoys me, because it makes it harder and harder to find, you know, faces to use. Um, her hair is, um, a, um, a Jack Sparrow hairpiece with, uh, certain areas painted black, and then she's got the bandana painted on. Um, her sword is pretty much the same as last time. I may have touched it up a little bit, but I think it's pretty much the same. Um, you see the back of her torso with the continuation of her shirt and then some stripes. Her torso right here, she's got the vest on with a, uh, a, uh, dark tan shirt underneath. You can see, like, a little... Uh, skin showing through right there, and it's kind of funny because her hair covers up so much of the head So I had to I barely had to paint anything at all for her head. You can see the yellow right there I just had to paint the front um, You can see the back of the detail of her uh, torso. I didn't really do anything up here because the hair covers it anyway um, and You see that right there with the continuation like the lines and everything um, Then you see she's got uh, skin colored arms and then uh, gray gloves and uh, yeah, there's Michonne Heading way back to Season 3, we got uh, T-Dog. Uh, T-Dog is one of my favorite uh, characters from the earlier seasons of the show. Uh, some of his lines are just, I don't know, he's just, he's just, he's a good character. He's kind of a funny character, too, because he has some funny lines throughout the show. Especially when he goes to the barn and discovers Randall's gone. He goes, oh, hell no, and then he runs out. Uh, I don't know why, I, just, I, always, thought, I always loved that line. Um, but, of course, in this figure, he's painted in... Um, in uh, the outfit he wears in Season 3, Episode 4, Killer Within. Of course, it's Death Episode. I um, mean, you see he's got some... Uh, basically, he's really one of the only figures I had to dry brush. It's kind of funny, because going back, I realized like I always had to dry brush a bunch of my figures. But looking over these figures, I really only had to dry brush like three or four of them. Because all the characters live in communities now. They're not surviving on the road, so they always wear like pretty clean clothes for the most part. So I barely ever have to dry brush them anymore. Uh, but T-Dog, yeah, so his legs are dry brushed, his torso's dry brushed. You can just see he's got some creases and whatnot in his uh, gray or his uh, tan t-shirt. You can see the skin showing through. He's wearing a short sleeve shirt. 
capsule pistol, which I'm not quite sure if that really matches the pistol he had in the show, but it just kind of, I don't know, I threw it with the figure. It looks all right. Um, his head, I have the goatee painted on, and then a little, some little stubble for a mustache above it. Um, I kind of like that face. I think it looks like T-Dog a little bit. You know, it's got like the kind of confused slash angry look. Um, the back of him has some more, uh, just kind of the collar of his shirt, and then his bite mark. Um, you know, I think that looks pretty good. It'll kind of tilt it down so you can see it better. Um, of course, I didn't want to go, su you know, super. Like, I didn't want to paint the entire back of this figure red. You know, I wanted to just kind of be like a subtle little mini detail in the figure. And I think it looks pretty good. I thought about sanding down, like sanding like the corner of his shirt down to kind of show that some of the flesh was missing. Um, but I opted just for painting the red instead. Um, so yeah, there's T-Dog. One of my, I feel like one of the most underrated characters of the show. He's just really, I don't know why, he just had some great lines, and overall, even though they didn't give him much to do, I thought he was one of the definite standouts from uh, the first couple seasons. So right after T-Dog, we have another figure that actually hasn't been updated since part one. Uh, this guy is basically, he's supposed to just be like, like I originally made him just because I liked the torso, and I thought it would make like, like I could like cover up the, the paint stains of the original torso with blood stains, just make him like a cool background figure to use for like battle scene mocks. Um, and then I eventually, that basically, that idea basically morphed into me kind of basing him loosely around the, uh, the Terminus guy that's uh, slitting people's throats. Um, in, uh, or the, I think, I believe actually it's the one holding the bat in the scene. He's got, like, the buzz cut and everything in the scene, and I just kind of based, uh, this figure around that guy, like, very loosely, mainly just because of the buzz cut and, like, the blood stains and everything. Um, but yeah, so he's basically just, a the painter minifigure just kind of decked out in blood stains. You can see he's got him kind of at the top of his sleeves, and this guy basically was just an excuse for me to go crazy with, uh, my red paint and just kind of do a character completely, you know, gored out really <laughs> and you see he's got brown shoes painted on you see his face I just kind of painted uh, uh, white over the uh, pupils or over the eyes that were I believe originally like yellow it looked a little too evil I think you see he's got the buzz cut painted on oh voice crack there <laughs> and you see some more uh, blood stains on the back of him um, you see the machete is just completely coated in them and yeah like I said just basically an excuse for me to go all out with a bunch of blood stains and um Overall, I think this figure does a pretty decent job. I think I really like all the way he turned out. And, um, like I say, he just kind of works for, like, random background uh, character for, like, a battle mock or something like that. So, there's him. Another figure that I feel like is a great improvement over my last version of him in Part 3. Uh, next up, we have Simon. Um, yeah, the last one, I, I decked him out way too much in, uh, dirt stains and dry brushing, and I realized, like, as, like, during Season 7, that his he actually wore some pretty clean clothes throughout the show. Obviously, he lives in the Sanctuary, he's probably not gonna go around coated in mud every day. So I basically just kind of redid this figure, um, but I made him look neater, and I, I kind of, you know, changed up the design of him a little bit, and then I just didn't really dry brush him like I did with the last version. So, he's wearing, uh, green pants, of course, with, uh, brown shoes. You see he's a black belt painted on. You can see his uh, sleeves. Here he really doesn't have sleeves, it's like a short sleeve shirt. Um, you can see his pockets with kind of the lines leading down to the belt. You can see a white t-shirt underneath and then the skin showing through with the lapels. Um, you see his mustache is repainted. Um, he's got a little handgun. Um, his hair I actually completely sculpted to kind of look similar to the... Uh, the um, it's a hair that's been used a lot, but the first time I remember seeing it was on um, Peter Venkman in the Ghostbusters Firehouse. So I kind of just refer to it as that hair. Um, so I kind of tried to, my best to sculpt a hair that looked really similar to that, but was kind of moved farther back. I didn't use that hair because I felt like it, you know, like the the hairline goes like up to right here, and I wanted it to be farther back than that. So um, you can see I sculpted. I think the sculpt looks pretty good actually. I'm really happy with how it turned out. You see the back of him, you can just see his belt painted on, and then some more creases and whatnot. And uh, yeah, there's Simon. I freaking love Stephen Ogg, and I'm so happy this figure is getting um, a, a chance to shine because I just love the actor so much. His comedic timing is so perfect. Next up, we have Morgan, um, and this figure, I like I said, I debated painting him in a, like a dark blue shirt and the Kingdom armor, kind of like he wears in the season seven finale, and it looks like we're gonna see him wearing the same thing in season eight. Um, I debated painting him in that, uh, but then I decided I just I love the the uh, tan jacket look for him. I've made my like last three versions of Morgan in the same outfit, and I just always really like the way it turned or it looks. So I decided to just do that again. Um, you can see this one; he's got the uh, strap kind of going down the, the torso. He's got a couple pockets painted on. The lapels kind of folded upwards right here. You can see like a white T-shirt, like a white V-neck T-shirt underneath. Uh, brown shoes paint on. Like I said, that's my old version of brown paint. That's why it looks like the paint's chipping a little bit. Um, I probably could touch that up, um, if I'm being honest. Um, 
His face is, um, I believe the same face I have for the last one, but the paint was way too dark. It was that, like, this shade of brown that I used, so I decided to use a lighter shade, and I decided just kind of, you know, I think that it just turned out neater, really. I mean, you see he's got a hairline painted on. I'll kind of lean him down a little bit so you can see it better. He's got the uh, black hairline painted on. You can see the back of the strap and then his hood right here and some more creases in the torso. And then a staff, I rounded off both sides and then I decided to uh, actually make this tip uh, pointy for when he's, you know, at the end of um, uh, season seven, episode something, um, 13 maybe, the kingdom episode where, uh, where Richard dies and I think uh, Ben dies too. Um, so I decided to kind of, you know, or cut that to a point and then I kind of decked it out in some blood stains, some dripping blood and whatnot. And um, yeah, I really hope Morgan doesn't die this season. Lenny James is such a fantastic actor. I believe he's one of the, he's probably the most layered character in the entire show. And I love seeing what he can bring to the table as each season goes on. So let's fingers crossed that Morgan doesn't die. Let, let's hope his word or his uh, line in the trailer. Let's hope he stays true to his word. Next up, we have Sasha, and of course, she's painted in the outfit she kind of wears in um, the hilltop in uh, season seven. Um, and this is kind of, you know, like her death scene mainly as well. Um, and then, of course, it's just like a, like a gray shirt, really. And then she's got uh, some blue jeans, um, a, uh, you know, brown shoes painted on. You can see the belt with the belt buckle right there. You see just some creases in her shirt. Um, her face, I got an, uh, an accurate skin color this time, kind of more of like a lighter brown. And then I repainted the mouth, but the eyes and the eyebrows are the same as um, the official figure that, whose face that I painted. Um, her hair I painted uh, black, just to kind of cover up some old, um, you know, some old printing that was on there. Um, and then her, I kind of sanded down the sides of her hair to kind of create, you know, more of like a compact look. So it was very, like, circular originally. Um, you can just see the back of her torso right here with some more creases and everything. I believe that collar is actually from the original figure torso. I just left it on. Um, you can see just, like I said, some more creases and whatnot in her shirt. Her, uh, her arm or her skin is painted on her arms because she's wearing a short sleeve shirt. And then the same gun that I always give her with the, you know, the gray silencer at the front of it. I don't know if she still uses this gun anymore, but considering she used it through a lot of the, uh, through a lot of, like, seasons five and six, I just decided to keep it with her. So, yeah, there is Sasha Williams. Next up, we have Father Gabriel, and I mainly just decided to redo this figure because the last version was in part one, and it was a really generic figure. I only made it because I had the Snape torso available, and I thought it worked well for Father Gabriel, so... And just decided to make him, and I actually kind of went, I did something different with this figure, I decided, to, rather than just remake that, I decided to give him the, uh, the hunter green jacket that he wears throughout, he's worn since, like, season six onwards, um, I think that looks pretty good, and then I also gave him this little hunting rifle that he's been carrying a lot recently, you see I painted different details of it black, um, you see the back creases of the jacket, doesn't look very good, I kind of did that last minute, um, his uh, torso, all I really did was I just kind of repainted the little collar and then some black around it uh, to kind of make it look more rectangular. Um, and then his face, I put some more detail on. I actually just kind of painted on some uh, lines, some cheekbones, and then redid the goatee and then kind of redid the eyes a little bit so the pupils don't look super big. It kind of made the, the black part of the eyes bigger. Um, and then overall, he's just a pretty simple figure yet again. Uh, but I really, I really like the way he turned out, though. I think he, you know, for the small amount of work that was put into him, he looks pretty good. I actually had to zoom out a little bit for this figure, guys. Uh, next up, we got Winslow. And um, each showcase, with the exception of the last one, I like to kind of uh, do some sort of unique Walker figure. You know, for whatever unique walkers we've seen, you know, in the season, or just any, you know, cool ones. I believe in part one, I did Michonne's pet walker, which I could probably, I should probably update for part five, to be honest. Um, and then in part two, I did uh, the bicycle girl, and then Sophia as a walker. Well, I guess I didn't do anything in part three, but I decided to do Winslow in this one, because I just love, I love that whole fight scene. I wasn't crazy about episode ten, but I thought that fight scene was awesome. Here, I'm going to center it a little bit more. You can just see, basically, it's a regular Lego skeleton that I've sculpted a bunch on. I cut up toothpicks and kind of stuck them in, in him to kind of represent all the uh, all the spikes and everything that were sticking out of him. Then I painted him all tan. Um, I painted his, uh, kind of his leg, or oh, that voice crack, holy crap. Um, I painted his legs uh, dark brown. And then, of course, the helmet at the top here was also sculpted. You can see the mouth, kind of like the little, uh, you know, nuts and bolts and everything, you know, in the, just like random details right here. You can see there's like blood dripping from this spike for when Rick sticks his hand through it. Um, and then just a bunch of spikes, you know, or aka toothpicks sticking out of them. Um, so you guys can kind of just observe this figure. Um, but yeah, I really like the way he turned out. I think he is one of probably the best walker figure I've done. I think I've done like four or five walker figures. He's probably the best. 
Um, and yeah, he's one of my favorites of this showcase as well. I just love how unique he is. And I haven't seen many other people do Winslow too. And I hope to see uh, more Winslows as time goes on. Next up, we got Tyrese. And this is a figure that I'm actually really happy I redid him. I didn't have to, but the old version just wasn't really accurate. I believe I, he had like a black torso. And the belt, it was like, uh, I think the belt was brown. It wasn't green like it was on the show. It just wasn't super accurate, so I decided to redo him. Um, this figure, I believe, is based off, of, or at least this outfit is based off of his look in Season 4. I believe that was what that was re what the reference picture was of um, when I was, you know, painting him. You can see he's got, um, you know, uh, his sleeves are rolled up, so you can see the skin showing through on his arms right there. Uh, just black pants, haven't really done anything to that. Kind of painting the continuation of his shirt onto his belt. You can see the green belt with some buckles in it, um, going up his torso, and then some creases in his shirt, and then some, some uh, grody looking sweat <laughs> dripping down from the collar of his shirt. Um, his face was actually a minifigure series face painted uh, brown with the, with the uh, beard uh, painted on. Um, and then you see he's wearing the uh, uh, dark blue beanie. Um, if you go to the back of him, you can see the continuation of his uh, belt right there, and some more creases, and, and then his uh, shirt drooping down again right there. Whoops. And then his uh, hammer is painted in a metallic silver. You can see the back of his hairline, by the way, there too. Um, but the hammer is painted in a metallic silver with the blood running down it, you know, just like with a bunch of blood stains on it. Um, and yeah, I do. I miss Tyrese. I think he was one of the better characters of the show. He kind of represented like the group's humanity for a while there in season five. Um, kind of like in, you know, like after Herschel died, he kind of took that role as, uh, like the human, like the, you know, human character of the group, really. And, uh, overall, I just miss him. You know, he's a great character, and I miss him. And then to close out this video, this very long video, <laughs> we have Eugene. And, um, Eugene, of course, he's painted in a different outfit for, that I've ma never made for him before, and this is, like, his savior outfit. You can see he's got, uh, dark gray pants with some, uh, black shoes painted on. You can see he's got a, uh, black button-up shirt underneath. Uh, with the skin showing through and then some pockets. Um, his jacket is um, has some uh, lapels and some buttons painted painted on it. Um, you see black sleeves. Um, I actually heavily sanded down the um, <clears throat> the mullet hairpiece to make it look more accurate to Eugene because his mullet isn't like super long. It's kind of like you know about to like the length of his head short. Um, then the face is the same as last time. You can see just kind of some lines in his face and then like a little bit of stubble underneath. Um, and I figure this is like a season outfit for Eugene. I don't think he's going to be a member. He's probably not going to be one of the bad characters. He's not going to be a savior by the end of the season. And he'll probably adopt his old, um, his old attire once that happens. You know, t-shirt and, you know, shorts and everything. So because of that, I decided to not destroy or not scrape the paint off of the old pants I had for Eugene. Because I really like the way these turned out. So next Eugene figure I make, I'll probably be using these pants. And then I'll probably make another torso for him as well someday. So we'll just see whenever that comes up. Um, that'll probably be what my next Eugene figure looks like. Because I'm assuming he's not going to stay a savior forever, you know. Once the war is over, if he's not dead, he'll probably convert back to Rick's group. They'll probably accept him. Um, but yeah, there's Eugene. And let's close out this video. So there you go, guys. There is my Lego The Walking Dead Custom Painted Minifigures Part 4. Uh, let me know what your favorite one is down in the comments. I'm pretty fond of all of them. Although if I had to pick a favorite, I gotta say I'm pretty fond of the way Winslow turned out. I thought that was a really fun and unique figure to make. And of all the figures that I uh, in this showcase, he was probably the most fun I had making one. So uh, let me know what you guys think of the premiere tonight once you've seen it. Um, after, maybe if you watched this uh, video before the premiere, uh, come back and tell me what you think of it once, you, once you're done watching it. Um, I would always love to talk about The Walking Dead with you guys. It's one of my favorite shows currently on TV, and I am so excited for All Out War to start tonight. Um, as for when Part 5 is coming out, um, it's hard to say. If I don't get one out by a season finale, then it'll most likely be on the next season premiere. You know, that's, it's either one of the two for showcases uh, from me. Um, and then as for figures to expect during it, um, all I can really confirm is that I am going to be doing a New Beginning Rick. I'll probably start working on, on him as soon as we see him in the premiere tonight. Uh, but other than that, I'm not quite sure what other figures. Maybe just updates of old figures, or updates of some of these figures if they change their outfits going into Season 9. Uh, which I'm assuming a lot of them will, considering we're probably going to see the time skip around that time. Uh, but anyway guys, like I said, let me know what your favorite episode, or what your favorite uh, moment from tonight's episode was in the comments. Let me know what your favorite figure in the showcase was. And as always, thank you so much for watching guys. I love making these videos. It's one of my favorite types of videos to do on this channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace out.